Hey folks, here we are again at the 2014 ICAST show here in Orlando, Florida. I got one of the West's best. Uh, he's got back, going back to the BASS Elite Series. Chris Zaldane, he qualified the hard way, and now he's back there, he's fishing with the big boys. Chris, you're with Mega Bass now, and you, you got some real cool rods here, and I want you to walk me through them, talk to me about some of the Mega Bass rods. Sure, absolutely. First of all, I want to say westernbass.com. I've been on that site, I mean, growing up back in the NCBF days and watching this guy and all the videos and things like that. Just an honor to be with you guys here today. Uh, yeah, real quick, six new rods in the Orochi X lineup. Uh, you know, this, this is the same line, the Orochi X line that Aaron Martins, uh, Luke Clausen used and myself used all last year. Aaron got an AOI on the Bassmaster Elite Series Tour last year using these rods. So we got six new ones. I won't go into detail on all of them, but there's two spinning rods, one all-purpose rod, two cranking rods, and my personal favorite, the 10 power, eight foot rod, kind of a moderate bend, double foot guides all the way up the rod. I designed this rod to be a swim bait rod. You know, the new trend right now, uh, you know, we've been throwing wake baits for a long time, great wake bait rod, uh, but the new trend is the glide baits. You know, it's the, to, the six to eight inch glide type baits that this rod was made for. So uh, if you get a chance, check it out, uh, Megabass, USA.com or any of the Western Bass videos, we'll, we'll be showing them there. Now on this new glide bait rod, like Chris is saying, that glide bait, I mean, a lot of the glide baits, the guys out west, they're throwing them up to 14, 16 inches, yeah, right? Absolutely. And so you've developed a rod to accommodate that type of bait, because it's just a matter, the swim bait stuff, once it evolves in the west, it's like wildfire, it just kind of goes Texas and then out to Florida. So you've got the rod already taken care of. What kind of line are we throwing with this thing? And what, like, what type of retrieve do you use? Uh, a lot of guys know about the glide bait, how do you retrieve a glide bait once you get it out there? Absolutely, so starting with the rod again, it's super lightweight, double foot guides all the way up, little thicker wall on there to, to handle the two to eight ounce uh, glide bait. This, you know, this Fuji reel seat, you could fit a 200 size reel, a 300 size reel, a 400 size reel, no problem. I like throwing a 20 to 25 pound test fluorocarbon line. Sometimes I'll go to mono if I'm throwing those big MS slammers, uh, those big wake bait, those big rats, you know, I'll go to 25, 30 pound mono, but I like a good 25 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon line when I'm throwing those glide baits. Those glide baits you want you want to sink just a little bit. It's almost like a big jerk bait, but you're not jerking it with the rod like this. The retrieve is just kind of a, I call it a stuck, steady retrieve where you're sticking it and then moving it. So. You were using a technique like that and a rod similar to this. I know you've been working on this type of rod for a while. You almost pulled off an FLW win on Clear Lake a few years ago and you were utilizing that same technique. Absolutely. Eight foot power rods, you know, you know, Mega Bass, it's a, it's a Japanese company. They're known for uh, their finesse. You think Aaron Martin, they're known for their finesse prowess, you know, and, and we got away from that a little bit with this rod right here, catering to more of the guys down south. The power rods, again, um, you know, those eight foot rods, when that fish bites it, we're, we're, when we're targeting the four to six pounders, when that fish bites it, you need to get that fish to the boat now uh, and get paid, so. All right, Chris, let's see what else you got. Show us another rod. And you know, deep cranking is another thing that has won a lot of money, not only on tour, but out west uh, for a long time. I think of guys like Randy McAtee when I think deep cranking, out on clear, like Shag Rock, whatever it might be, grab yourself a big old plug about that long. You need the right equipment to throw that. Uh, 200 size reel, 12 pound test fluorocarbon, and this is the new, we call it the launcher. Aaron Martins designed this rod. It's a seven foot 11 uh, uh, glass composite mix rod. So it's got a softer tip, but it's got, it's, it's, it's got the backbone behind it to, to really launch it, and they call it the launcher, to launch that, that, that plug across shag rock, grind it down to 18 to 20 feet, and when that fish takes it, you just move your hips, set the hook, and that fish is in the boat every single time. I'm on the Tennessee River system. I'm gonna go fish a tournament. I've heard that they got some deep ledges, and I need a crankbait that's gonna go 18, 25. They got some crankbaits that'll push that 30-foot barrier now. Absolutely. Is this the rod gonna work for me? And I wanna know, are you gonna be using monofilament floral or a small diameter braid? Yep. And it's no secret, when you're deep cranking, it's all about the length of a, ca of a cast, you know? Without having to long line it, you want to make the longest cast possible to get that crankbait down the deepest. So uh, again, with the 7 foot 11 rod that gives you that, I use a 12 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon in VizX. The fluorocarbon sinks again and, and it allows that crankbait to, to, you know, to dig deep. Pick me out a rod that, I, that will cover a couple of different app, bass fishing applications for me. Absolutely, you know, I love an, uh, an all-purpose rod. Um, and when you think all-purpose, myself, I think the, the, the numbers that come to mind is 7-2. A 7-foot-2 rod, 
It allows you to make long casts. It, it allows you to make short pitches, okay? And in the Mega Bass line, the five power is the more moderate right in the middle power. So a good all-around rod that retails for $275 is a seven foot two five power rod. This one we're calling a Diablo Spec R rod. So it's seven foot two, moderate bend, enough juice to handle those Texas rigs, you know, uh, three eighths ounce, half ounce Texas rigs, up to your three eighths, half ounce, maybe even a three quarter ounce jig, spinner baits, buzz baits, anything moving this rod will handle. You know, that's the other thing, a, a lot of guys, and I can remember back when I was doing my rod research, back when I first started cutting my teeth as a bass fisherman, if it didn't say that it was a spinnerbait rod, I didn't think I could use it for spinnerbait. So what you're saying is, even though it might say good for this application, this application, this app, there are other various applications that I can use the rod sure. for. And, and of course, you could always, you know, if you're on a budget, you know, you get yourself a $275 rod. You know, I remember back in my days, I had a $300 rod and that, that was my baby. That was my baby. And the other thing that anglers don't realize what they could do to adjust their approach or to adjust their technique with the ro only rod you have is line, you know. Uh, if you need a little bit, so, so let's say we got a stiffer, heavy action rod, uh, to bring that stiffness down, you could go to a monofilament line. You know, something needs to give. A little bit of a cushion there uh, in that line, you know, will, will definitely alter the way that bait moves or whatever it might be. And conversely, on like a cranking style rod, if you put braid on a cranking style rod, that gives you a little more juice, a little more power. All right, folks, those are some great tips from Mega Bass. Superstar Chris Zaldane. Keep an eye out for this guy right here because this is not the last time you're going to see him. <laughs>